Hello there! I thought I would just do a quick update because Etsy has released its quarter one 2020 financial results. And although these things are usually looking back at what happened and the world has changed since quarter one, there is some updates on what's been happening obviously since the changes. Um, now I know a lot of shops are not doing great so some of this will kind of be hard to hear but it's good that Etsy is doing well. In the long run, I feel it's good for all of us in that the more new customers that come in, the more they start to understand Etsy, the more Etsy's name gets out there. Hopefully there is more people that will come back at a later date. So I don't want to be all too Pollyanna here and say everything's great. I know it's not great for a lot of people, but hopefully this is positive for the future. So let's have a look. I've only read a little bit of this already, and then I thought, nope, I want to dive in and explain to go through it all with, with everybody. So they're explaining that's a forward-looking statement. You can read that. I'll leave links to all of this. So here, obviously, is the propaganda slides but telling us the timeline um how they moved quickly to protect the team and community once they're knowing what was going on with the global updates compared to the Etsy updates <clears throat> now um to avoid getting this video demonetized and hit by a uh, youtube i will be using the lagalergy to cover th that that term of that illness that we're not allowed to mention <clears throat> So, for the global, global updates, the World Health Organization declared the global health emergency at the end of January, and ETSI, at just after that, set up its own Lagalogi task force and a note to employees to minimise the spread. So, as, as soon as possible, ETSI were looking after their own employees, which is awesome. Uh, February, the first reported deaths in Europe. Um, and restriction and travel and things were set up. Uh, testing in the US happened in March, was approved in March. Italy locked down in March. Uh, global closures announced, developed admin procedures and protocol for security guards and building maintenances. So this is things that they've not really announced before, but it's pretty cool that Etsy did set up in place to look after its own staff. And be aware, I know a lot of people are frustrated that they find it really hard to get in touch with Etsy just now, like anywhere. Quite simply, people will be working from home, hopefully where they can, there will be less people in working. So yeah, it's going to be a bit harder. <laughs> so bear with them. Um, so there we had where US declares a national emergency. Um, and where France locked down, UK closes non-essential stores. Uh, we didn't actually quite lock down as much as that, but yeah, whatever. Um, so ETC urged Congress to pass Lagerlergy relief for self-employed sellers. So yeah, ETC was involved in that push for America, which is cool. Um, ETC invests in off-site ads and allows bill deferment, def deferment and provides additional resources to help sellers. So yeah, for anyone that didn't know, ETC put in an extra five million into adverts and didn't start charging us for off-site ads until two days ago. Um, so we have Task Force continues centralize, to centralise information for health, safety and operations decisions. And we have a 20% year-on-year increase in product releases during quarter one, which is super interesting already. Let's look at what else they're saying. So despite the uncertainty, Etsy did deliver a solid quarter one. So what we're saying, gross merchandise sales, 1.4 billion, which is up 33% year on year, including the reverb sales. But if we have a look, quarter one 2019, that's still significant growth. There's always a big spike at Christmas. So that that is actually looking pretty good. Revenue up 34%. And whatever that is, um, 
<laughs> uh, but yes, it's up 24%. But yeah, so these these are looking good. There's there's a bit of growth going on. Growth merchandise sales, that's how much is actually being sold on Etsy. So that's that's a good figure. That's the one we want. Not so much interested in how much Etsy's making off of the, the sweat of our brows. Uh, Etsy Marketplace April was extraordinary. So this is kind of really interesting news. Um, and as we know, as we looked at the other week when I looked at the trend buzz on E-Rank for what terms had been trending last month, um, mask, mask searches was ridiculously huge and the numbers are just getting bigger. Um, but $133 million in mask sales in April is amazing. I will say though, people have said to me, and they're saying it all the time, it's like, I started a shop trying to sell masks and I don't get seen, I'm not getting sold. And yeah, it's possibly, if you're in America, it's probably not the best time to start mask sales now. The best time was three, four weeks ago. The problem is, with this kind of explosion, now there is going to be an absolute explosion in sellers as well, and only a few can get on the front page and stuff. Some people will, will do lucky, um, some people will catch <laughs> catch that wave. Obviously, this is also a fast-changing marketplace. What's happening is people on the front page are selling out super quickly, so you do have a chance of hitting the front page. But don't expect to list one mask and be an overnight success. You're going to have to work on this. You're going to have to dive in, get the SEO right, work on listing regularly to get the lucky slot to hit the front page for this. It's not it's not a given that if you decide to start making masks, you're suddenly going to do fantastically on Etsy. You're still going to have to work on it. You're still out there against a massive competition. But I will say other countries have been slower to make it law that you need to wear masks in public. So I think especially the UK definitely hasn't done this yet, and it's probably just about to happen. So if you're in the UK possibly think about this um but yeah in april non-mask sales were up 79 percent year on year but again this doesn't mean that everybody's doing great obviously some marketplaces are not doing some great so great so i hope we're going to dive some more into that so the demand shifted in early April. The first weekend of April generated over 2 million mask related searches. And as you can see how this increased, whether well, CDC recommends the use of cloth face coverings, the searches for masks went through the roof and it's remaining high. This is obviously a limited thing. I'm, who knows what the new world's going to look like, but this massive spike in selling of masks is not sustainable. It's going to fall away. But yeah, if you can, if you've hit on this trend, fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm glad for anyone that this is not making money in a bad way out of the pandemic. This is making what people need. And especially I've seen so many fantastic fun masks out there because yeah why does it have to look all terrible and everything and also this does help our healthcare workers if we are not buying the medical grade ones and leaving them for the people that really need it so yeah i'm pretty sure that the Etsy staff had to start panicking and um rapid mobilization to try and sort things out with the surge in demand to be perfectly honest to give Etsy credit where credit's due. A lot of sites where there's been massive surges in demand like this have crashed and done terrible. Now we've seen there's been trouble listing sometimes and stuff, but Etsy have kept themselves up <laughs> with this big spike. So that's kind of good. Um, so within hours of them seeing this demand in the surge, they created banners and automated filter filters, and they've retrained the search engine, which is pretty interesting. We'll hear more about that later. And within days, they scaled the inventory in sellers, they screened sellers, 
distributed demand and managed delivery expectations. Now, there has been some things going on behind the scenes here because some sellers got greedy and were listing masks to be made on demand, basically, which you're allowed to do. I have my bookmarks. I do that when I get an order. I create the bookmark and send it out. However, people were listing 99 masks selling out in a day and they're not able to make them in time. So that's obviously annoying customers. That's not what we want on Etsy. We don't want someone buying a mask and having to wait till December to get it. So Etsy's done some things with this. Um, I have not seen any mail outs of this. I've heard from people, so I don't want to speculate too much. But as soon as I find out definitely what they did here, I will go more in detail with that. As a result, Etsy sellers sold a lot of masks in April. They sold over 12 million face masks in April. That is amazing. And as we said, that's $133 million in April, or 17% of Etsy marketplace sales, 17% of what Etsy made, what Etsy sellers made in money was from face masks. I mean, wow. And if face masks by itself was a category, it would have been the second largest in April. That's amazing. <clears throat> and as we can see, face masks that was growing a tiny bit in March. I think a few of us saw what was coming. I know I bought something like that in March. And then April, wow, <laughs> that is quite a growth. And this is what I was saying here. The influx of new buyers creates opportunity to build loyalty. So new people coming in because they haven't been able to buy masks elsewhere or they haven't been able to buy pretty masks or fun masks. So the new buyers coming in is hopefully a long term good thing. Obviously, these crazy high sales won't last. But if people had a good experience with Etsy, they're more likely to add that to where they shop. You know, I'm sure everybody is talking about like that, that friend, or it might be themselves, who's been spending a bit too long on Amazon or eBay or whatever just now, sitting in, uh, doing the add to basket a little bit too much. So if Etsy starts becoming the site that they're doing that as well, then that's pretty cool. So six and a half million new buyers, or those are people who've not purchased for a year or more. And of the mask but and of the mask buyers, 32% had a 14-day repeat purchase rate, which is higher than average. So of all these brand new people coming in and buying masks, a lot of them were buying something else within a couple of weeks. And Etsy looking at the engagement, they've done TV, email, they've done lots of advertising for us all as well. <laughs> and here we go, repeating again, April was extraordinary. It was for Etsy, it was for many buyers, some of it for many sellers, but not for everybody. But hopefully this is still positive. Uh, we experienced broad demand across the marketplace. Um, as as we guessed at the start, as we saw in the trend buzz, growing demand on key categories and occasions, gifting, craft supplies and home decor. As they say, nesting. People are stuck at home. They want to make their home look nice. People are stuck at home. They've got nothing to do or they're stuck at home with the kids. They want something to do. Craft supplies. Also, People are maybe furloughed, their day job, they're maybe not making as much money as they used to. They're looking to start something new. So craft supplies to make things to sell and gifting. You can't go around to your mate's house for their birthday. You're maybe wanting a little something to tell someone that you're thinking of them. It's fantastic to get a handmade gift that you can get sent on to your friend. So all this demand is growing and there's fewer alternatives. Retail stores are closed. Um, I know certainly in the UK, supermarkets and places that sell food are open for sure. But yeah, the high street 
not not so much. Um, E-commerce shipping delays. Well, yeah, I think that's the same for all of us. I have noticed in the UK, a first class parcel that usually takes a day is taking about a week to get to my customers. But interestingly enough, some parcels I sent to America took six days, which is crazy. And there have been supply chain disruptions as well. So all of this meant the 79% increase in non-mask sales during April. So Etsy saying it pivoted its brand strategy, messaging and spend to support Etsy sellers. So they started the hashtag stand with small, open for business and everyday essentials, uh, pivoted inventory to favour in-demand products and categories. Um, yeah, so the as they should, pushing forward to things that people are searching for the most, which does mean that some of us will be getting left behind a little bit. Uh, TV Creative, doing um, delivering the Etsy story through the lens of our sellers. Um, I don't watch TV. I haven't seen any of this. <laughs> um, but increasing exposure so people know about Etsy and engagement strategies to build loyalty and retention among buyers. And this is a super important thing um, to make sure that in this spike, when people are finding Etsy, they find it a positive experience, so they keep coming back. Pivoted our brand platform to emphasize delivering joy in the everyday, which I think is a lovely message. So as, as they said before, with a stand with small, saying that Etsy is open for business, offers everyday essentials. And indeed, it does, because we have crafters creating all the things, the little bits of makeup that you can't necessarily buy anywhere else, soaps, all these things. And of course, this is supporting small businesses by shopping on Etsy. I think many of us have seen how some large companies have behaved with all of this. And we now don't necessarily want to support them. And we also know the companies that we do want to support. But supporting small businesses is equally a good thing. Um, message to sellers, we have your back. I know people will scoff at that. And Etsy aren't perfect. And they have their own back first, which that's perfectly fair enough. But they have done things like deferring payments, um, stopping the, us having to pay for the off-site ads for a bit of time and putting in extra um, extra advertising. So they have they have attempted to because at the end of the day, for the, they need the sales. They need us to make sales. They need buyers to come. And keep coming back. So they have to look after us, us not as the individual, us as the group. So elevating the trending categories. So here, here are the categories, and it's handy to see this because it gives you an idea of where Etsy are thinking. So you can target your stuff to the trending categories, and this is basically what we said. Before this all started, what people are going to be wanting. So it's no surprise, but home inspiration, tidying up the home. So the things that you make, can they be used for this kind of thing? Think of how to publish them for this. Again, home activities. Can you make kits and supplies and things for people to do? Even tutorials. Self-care. Again, Last night I had a lovely long soak in the tub with a hair mask on and everything. It's just nice to look after yourself or get a new perfume or anything like that. Gifting, again, personalised gifts, customised gifts, that little personal touch that you can't see people, you can't go to their party, but you can get them something. And the everyday Etsy, so that's now face masks as well. And they had the new TV campaign. I haven't seen it, but it seems to have done quite well. Um, so And social media presence is, so they've been pushing this stand with small, which, yeah, I think is a good hashtag. Um, engaging with buyers, utilizing new CRM tools, so customer service and, and marketing automation. 
So by our touch points and data sources, so where they're, they're finding us from, um, new to tools, intelligent, actionable, actionable custom, customer data. Um, yeah, so they're working on new tools. And we're saying best in class for search and discovery. Added to that, so the search which they are working on, there's some changes in that I think we'll come to, hopefully. The human connections, they are each and every time they buy from someone, it's an individual seller. So hopefully that becomes a trusted brand and a collection of unique items. So here's part of the search things, leveraging deep learning to close the semantic get semant can't speak semantic gap. Improved algorithms provide provide meaningful progress in search relevance. So they have been working on the search. They've been doing this for a while, and I will get into this more deeply. But basically, what search is wanting to do, and what will make the most for us all, is it's bridging that gap. It's taking what the buyer types in and showing them what they want to see. So it's not always going to be that perfect match for the words that you type in. The algorithm, the computer is going to get smarter and say, what is it that you might be wanting? What is it that you actually meant when you typed that in? So recognizing that different different words might mean the same, like gown and dress means the same kind of thing. So what kind of things would we be looking for? So if you search for floral gown, you might be shown an embroidered floral dress because the word's the same. It, it's saying, it's learnt. Gown and dress might be the similar thing, so you would be shown in both the searches. I will do I will go deep dive into this some more. This is not saying that keyword research is irrelevant, but it is saying that Etsy, the computer might start to understand you more and show you in better places. Um, giving reviews more prominence inspires trust in buyers. So yes, they're, they're always messing around with the layout, but we, we've had for a while now, we're seeing the reviews pop up in the listing below the picture. And it can be harder to find the descriptions, which can be a pain. But yeah, buyers like to see reviews. Um, and Etsy sellers are innovating. <laughs> this, this is cool to see different things. Pocket hugs is a new thing that's trending. A uh, little nice, nice, cute little buttony things, little decorations that you can just send a hug to somebody, which is cute. A new advertising approach is gives more seller control and more scalable for Etsy. So the offsite ads, yes, these have started up. We've talked about them. Um, so yes, Etsy is paying for offsite ads on Google, Facebook, Interest, Pin, in, yeah, and Google, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Bing. Um, and they have been paying for these for. And they have been paying for these for a number of years, but they've just changed this and we're getting to see it and everything. And now this is opened up so that buyer, so that sellers will be paying if a buyer sees you on these ads and clicks on your shop and purchases from your shop within 30 days. So if you haven't already, I've got videos on all of this and we should now be getting charged for this. So if you are below the threshold of $10,000 worth of sales in one year. Check and see if you want to keep these ads on. If you're keeping the ads on or if you're forced to keep the ads on, do the maths to figure out how much this is going to cost you and see if you have to put up your prices. And Etsy ads, <laughs> they've now gone back rather than having the combined ads, we've got individual ads. They're saying it's formerly known as promoted listings. It's not quite, we don't have the functionality that we had on promoted listings. I wish we could get that back. And quickly, I just want to say here for anyone still, still with us, I just want to say here, really check 
If you've been letting your Etsy ads just run, and I spoke to several people, including my mum, um, and your fees were looking much bigger than usual, and then looked in, your Etsy ads are trying to set, are trying to spend up to your budget now. So in the past, if you if you had your promoted listings were set for two dollars a day or five dollars a day, it wouldn't spend up to that. It would just spend. What, what was sensible depending on demand but now if demand is low for the search terms you've got you've got it will just push you to other search terms and it, it's going to end up spending the whole of your budget so make sure that your budget is what you're happy to spend check in on it maybe increase or lower your budget and yeah be be wary of that and a little bit on reverb talking about this was something that joined in with was taken over by Etsy last year so reverb seems to be doing pretty well seeing a surge in first-time buyers oh wow that's a terrible font keep commerce human I think that's worse than my handwriting And as we've already said, Etsy had a solid first quarter, including the reverb financials. A strong, strong start to the year, followed by significant volatility. Volati volatility. Wow, so can't speak. <laughs> but yes, um, yeah, that that graph says says it all. April was bonkers. Unfortunately, this doesn't translate to everybody's sales, but hopefully some of you did did pretty good. And here's some more about the revenue, um, what Etsy's been making. So from listing fees, transaction fees, and the payment platform that makes up the most of their money, um, advertising and all the other optional things make up. 31% and nearly 70% of what Etsy makes is made from sales and listing items. As they say, an improvement in key operating metric signals, continued progress and improving frequency. So there's a 16% increase in active buyers and a 22% increase in habitual buyers. And the gross... Uh, and the sales per active buyer is increasing, which is cool. Um, Two-year growth rate up 6%. And we can see the growth. Um, if you exclude the face masks, there's still been good growth. And this is cool because the summer months are usually, for a lot of people, unless you're in wedding, they're not too great. Unfortunately, things like wedding won't be doing so good now. Um, but everything else is up a bit which is cool uh, no idea what this is about normally stable predictable cohorts experienced a meaningful inflection yeah so it's showing stuff went up <laughs> uh, so optimizing our cost structure while investing for long-term growth so here's the Variable investments for long-term growth is working on the Etsy brand marketing and incremental product investments, including search and frequency. As they've already said, they're working on search. But the one-time investments, so it's saying roughly they've put in about $13 million as a one-time support because of the Lago Lurgy. So off-site ad fees waived for a month, bill payments deferred, sell extra seller sources and resources and support and listing and ad credits i believe they gave some listing and ad credits to some uh, groups like wedding sellers that were that are obviously struggling a uh, strong flow strong cash flow generation re reinforces our financial position and capital allocation strategy so there's their cash flow if that makes sense to anybody and as they say, yeah, all, all this, the, the depth and duration of headwinds and tailwinds are unknown. So the growth, 
was the core business trends, but the tailwinds of these mask sales and people going from regular shops to online, all these different things. This is an unknown quanti quantity that will hopefully be is helping just now, but we don't know how long it'll help. And also headwinds, things that will slow us down. Obviously, the economic environment everywhere is saying there's going to be an economic hit from this um, loss job losses and consumer confidence if you don't know if you're going to keep your job you're less likely to buy on luxuries so we don't know that there's going to be a balancing out we don't know how much extra eats you will pick up compared to how much they'll lose so yeah this is something that nobody can predict Eatsy has temporarily moved to providing quarterly guidance in result of the conditions. Okay, that was their presentation. Um, so, no major surprises there. Possibly surprises in how big and fantastical the peaks were, <laughs> were looking. That is pretty cool. But let me know in the comments, how has your quarter one been? Are you seeing drops? Are you seeing increases? Are you putting more work into your shop? Are you putting less work into your shop? For me personally, I have been putting a bit less work into my shop and I'm plodding along. I'll be honest. Um, there are great opportunities just now, but I think a few of us basically, I think most of us, keeping motivation can be difficult. So yes, that's something I do have to work on. But anyway, I hope everyone found this kind of interesting to see what Eatsy's on about. Um, yeah, and I'll speak to you later.